Hello everybody, I'm Byron. Uh, today I want to talk about Wait Till Next Year by Doris Kearns Goodwin. She is the one who wrote uh, Team of Rivals, which I already did, and she might just be my favorite writer. She's great. Uh, luckily, this book was audiobook was narrated. I do a lot of audiobooks for reasons I don't read. I don't listen to audiobooks more than I read, but a lot of the ones I do on this uh, series are audiobooks for reasons. Anyway, it's narrated by the same person, so that gave it a sort of consistency with Team of Rivals that really helped me to really feel like it was the same writer. And it was incredible. It was a great book. Um, she talks about learning about baseball and growing up with baseball with the Brooklyn Dodgers. Um, and at the very end, she becomes a Red Sox fan because the Dodgers leave. And her kids are Red Sox fans, and she's like, oh, uh, yeah. And her kids basically go through the same thing she went through with the Dodgers. And every year they think the Red, this is, their kids think this is the Red Sox year, which was the same thing she thought when she was a kid, which was that this year is the, uh, the Dodgers year. And it was pretty cool, and I don't know if she did this on purpose or if I did this on accident or if I did this on purpose, but around the middle, I sort of stopped keeping track of what year it was specifically. And that helped the tension in the book a bit because I knew the Dodgers did win the World Series in 1955, but I never really knew which year she was talking about when she talked about a year of baseball. Uh... So I never really knew when they were going to win the World Series. I knew it was going to happen, but I never knew, as she talked about each season, if this was the season that they were going to win the World Series. And of course, I also, at the end, knew that the Red Sox eventually won the World Series in 2004. Um, and it's a lot about her relationship with her father and a lot about her relationship with her mother. Uh, her mother was very sick. Her mother died after the uh, Dodgers won the World Series. That happened after the Dodgers won the World Series. Um, and of course, the big ending of the, that, I guess. Okay, so when I was in school and we were learning about how books are structured, it was never made entirely clear as to climax and ending I think the climax happens significantly before the end of the book around three quarters four fifths of the way through that's what I've always thought and there's always been whenever I've read a book there's always been one event sort of around that point and then another major event at the end, nearer to the end. And I've always thought the, the three-quarter, four-fifths mark was the more significant event in the book. And in this book, the three-quarter, four-fifths mark was the Dodgers winning the World Series. And the end point, just before the epilogue, and I don't even know if it was officially called an epilogue, but it felt like an epilogue, the, the, the end was the Dodgers moving to L.A. Um, yes. And so I think the Dodgers winning the World Series was the climax of the book. But depending on how you view these things, uh, you may think that the Dodgers moving to L.A. was the climax of the book. And, you know, I don't remember. I'm pretty sure it was before her mother died. And you could say her mother died was the climax of the book, sort of going between. Sorry, I'm pretty sure the Dodgers moving was before, was after her mother died. Okay. And 
she talked, and it was also a book. It wasn't just a book about baseball and her relationship with Chris. It was also a book about growing up in the 50s. Uh, and that was really interesting. She talked about the McCarthy hearings and the Cold War in general. She talked about uh, the civil rights movement. That was a big part of the book. And just the way she viewed them. And occasionally, I think in this, I don't remember the specifics, but she did do something like sort of a canned food drive or something like a canned food drive to help with the civil rights movement. And that was pretty cool how she goes from being a bystander to a participant. And there was an interest. Okay, so she listens to it on the radio and she loved the score books. That was her favorite thing, was keeping the score books. And she, every day when her dad came home, she would tell her dad about the baseball game. And they loved it. And then eventually, I think a couple seasons into her into the book, she actually gets to go to a Dodger game. And it's a cool incident where she sees a nun get a little rowdy at the game. And that was cool. She's Catholic. And there was a very funny scene where she goes into confession. And she has to admit that she wished harm on another human being. And it, it, oh, it's, you got to read this part. It's really funny. And you know what? I'm not even going to tell you because it's just a really funny scene. And I want you to read it before she goes to confession. Oh, it's great. And it has a lot to do with Catholicism. That's a big part of the book. And she struggles with faith near the end of the book. And it doesn't really resolve as to where she is now as a an old lady. I don't maybe she wouldn't like be calling her that, but she is well into her way she grew up in the fifties. So she's even when she was writing this book was in the two thousands, so she would have had to have been in the two thousands. I don't know specifically when it was written, but it had to have been in the two thousands because of the Red Sox winning the World Series. So she wrote the book. She was probably but an old lady, and we didn't. Maybe she did, but I can't really remember her resolving the, the crisis with faith. And it was, I think, around the time her mother died, but I don't, I don't remember that part that well. Um. And the ending, she became a Red Sox fan, but her sister became a Rockies fan after the, the Dodgers left. I still like the Dodgers a lot, personally. I like the Dodgers. They are, the World Series starts tonight as I record this. It, this video won't go up for a little while, but as I record this, the World Series starts tonight and I'm hoping the Dodgers win and they play the Red Sox. So that's interesting. I wonder who she'll be rooting for. I mean, surely she's forgiven the Dodgers by now. I wonder, I should Google that. I wonder if I can Google it as I'm recording this. I will keep talking. There's a red mark. Oh, no. Okay. Sorry, I'm messing with this app. I hope those red marks are okay. Oh, well. Um, maybe it's as I tap the phone it makes the red mark. Um, Doris... Kearns Goodwin. Let's go for news. No, it doesn't give any news. Let's type in World Series. You can all push. No. 
and just start talking about politics. Oh well, I would like to know who she wants to win this World Series. So, nope, it's not when I tap the phone, it's when I open and close the recording app. When I go back and forth of the recording app. Um, so at the end, it, it, I, this book made me cry. It was beautiful. Uh, I don't remember when exactly I cried, but what it might have been, it's the very end where they're going through Coors Field and her father has a brick in Coors Field dedicated to him. And that was cool. I really forget when I cried. Maybe it was to do with her sons growing up with baseball. I don't remember. It wasn't when her mother died. I do remember that. Um, I remember where I was when I was crying, but I don't remember precisely the moment in the book. Anyway, great book. Gotta read it. Uh, I'm gonna look up some more of her books, because they're great. I love them. All right. Thank you. Bye.